The next items on the list were really essentially all of the things that made up the base of the table. It was P12 through 15 or 16. I can't remember exactly, but uh, we'll walk through uh, all of them here. We began with the legs, the bottom support legs. Um, and these were important to me because uh, I wanted to make them in solid uh, walnut to match the cabinets, uh, but uh, trying to get pieces that were f four inches thick and five or six inches tall was not easy to do. So we began by importing the 3D model over and then put it into a spire and uh, essentially came out with the uh, form as you see it here. This is the long single piece with uh, steps on both sides and then there were two smaller ones that attach on either side of this piece. So once we got this uh, drawing in place and uh, took all the measurements and we knew that it had uh, had transferred over correctly, we started working on it. And uh, the second thing we did is we added all the slots. This slot was on both sides, which let the, la uh, the legs that come out attach in a slot. So uh, we did this, turned it over, and cut the other side. These slots are for the quarter inch veneer plywood that goes around the base. And one of the things I really wanted to do was add some pretty scrolling uh, in, in these areas here that show everything from here to here does not show it's covered so what shows is from here out on all four legs so uh, I had my daughter who is very proficient in design uh, put some uh, scrolls together and we added them and here they are and they turned out really I thought quite nicely we we played with them and we got them to where uh, they were exactly what we wanted. Then, of course, once we got everything in place, we went to, to the tool paths and uh, got everything in place, all our tool paths for the slots, uh, these uh, tool paths for the carvings were done in V-carve uh, with a V-bit, and uh, obviously the rest uh, was done was done with a, a two flute very long uh, bit. Uh, it had to go through uh, almost three and a half inches of solid walnut uh, which made me very nervous. I knew that I was going to break a bit or, or burn something up but uh, once we got that in place we cut it, uh, we previewed all the paths and uh, kind of look to see what it looked like and th that's what cut out I thought this was beautiful the scroll work and uh, the important part was is all of the grooves were in place for the veneer and for the legs that uh, uh, were there. And uh, obviously you'll see as we uh, went to the CNC machine and cut it, uh, we flipped this over and uh, did the identical thing on both sides so the slots were done. And once we had all of this in place, uh, we went to the CNC and cut it. But before that, we had to do a lot of glue up and sanding, uh, trying to get pieces large enough and thick enough to cut. So let's go to that step.
We glued uh, some pieces together after we'd put them through uh, the planer, the joiner, and here coming out of the big drum sander. <clears throat> we put, uh, put them through a couple of times to make sure that all the glue joints and everything were gone. And we were able to get about, I think it was eight or nine of these pieces uh, with the wood we had. Eight or nine of these particular pieces uh, that we were able to glue up. In many cases, we had to gl glue three of these together uh, to get the width that we wanted. So it uh, it was really uh, quite thick, as you'll see when we get to the point where we're trying to cut it on the CNC. So once we glued them top to bottom, then we glued them all together. This is the long uh, piece that has uh, a leg on both sides that we glued together. This is uh, when we glued two pieces together but later found we had to do three. Uh, so we glued another piece on uh, after we had planed it. And so here you see them all with three uh, pieces of wood. There's the two uh, small legs and the large leg uh, in place and we left them for 24 hours then we took them to the CNC machine and started to uh, cut them. Now this uh, is cutting um, one of the small um, the small legs and uh, you'll see it as time goes on with this cut that um, this is, I think this was a three inch bit, but I couldn't use the full three inches to begin with because, uh, I hadn't learned a trick with Mach 1 and Aspire yet. Uh, since then I have learned it that, uh, made it so that the router didn't go, uh, up far enough to clear and hit the safety switch. So... We finally got that figured out, and as you can see, um, it really cut it uh, quite nicely. I, I really thought that we were going to break a bit, but this bit uh, w was a good bit. I ordered it online from the same company I've ordered a number of things from, and it, and it, it, uh, it worked out very nicely. I would order another bit. It was expensive, but I, I would order it again. And this... Uh, version here shows you how close we are uh, well not quite it gets it gets lower there we go we we're very very close uh, the CNC is so accurate it's uh, made it so I could do this and not worry about burning the the top of the Walnut, but as you can see, we still have uh, a little more than three quarters of the next piece to do. But we finally got them all cut, and this is the jig that I built to put all the pieces in. Uh, and then we put a little spacer in the middle so that we could do each one of the small legs. And the legs fit in, it's all held in by vacuum, and you see the pop up pens on the right hand side. Uh, those pop-up pens allow me to put that jig in a very specific place every time and uh, and then I can put the leg in the jig and it it will it will not budge and then we get the machine to go to zero zero and let her rip now I, I must tell you I was nervous 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 about doing these carvings. Each one of these small pieces I calculated to cost around 60 bucks worth of black walnut. It's not cheap. And so I just didn't want to screw it up. Um, and so uh, the first one that we did, I was really nervous. But after the first one and I saw how nicely uh, it did the job. Uh, I wasn't nervous anymore. I'll just let you see how pretty it turns out.
and really with great detail these little circles that it makes just just really turn out nice I was very happy with it so once we got this all in place uh, it was time to cut the um, brackets aluminum brackets that hold all the legs together so I cut four of them uh, on the metal chop saw and uh, as soon as they were cut I cleaned them up on the grinder and then I built a little jig so that I could drill the holes in a very precise place on all four of them. All four, all four of these uh, take eight holes, two on each side, and uh, I, I did the jig so that I could get the, the two holes on 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 one edge of the angle in place. And then once I had the two holes drilled in the precise place I wanted them, then I, uh, I took another piece of angle, the one that was going to be opposing it on the leg, on both legs, and then I drilled the hole using one as a template so the holes were exactly in the same place. I then used the, the uh, aluminum to as a template to uh, mark my holes and drill them through. As you can see, when I pull this out, I had to the wood was so thick and my bit was not totally long enough. I had to uh, raise the uh, bed of the drill press to make it work, but it worked fine. And once I got that done. I took it over to the CNC table and ran the bolts through and I wish I could tell you that they just slid through like butter everything was perfect but it was close enough to where I can say it worked out fine I will say there was additional augering and things like that but it turned out fine and very very sturdy um, I was I was really very happy with the way it turned out. Then it was time to cut uh, both of the circles, the lower and upper circle uh, that hold the slats vertically in place. This happens to be the bottom circle that has s holes already drilled in it. Uh, so that it attaches to the uh, feet. The top one does not have that. And those holes that are drilled in it were a template that I used to drill uh, the feet. You see that uh, eighth inch drill bit in the center it lines everything up. Uh, the, uh, as you see, we went through here and drilled each one of the holes to ensure that uh, we wouldn't break any screws. By the way, that uh, eighth inch drill hole goes right into the center of the legs here, and that's what lines everything up. So once we had all the holes drilled and blown, aired out, everything else, we put the uh, plate back in place, centered it in the hole, lined the lines up on each leg, and then we uh, used a countersink bore to countersink each one of the 12 holes so that nothing protruded past the uh, 36 millimeters of Baltic birch. <clears throat> so each one of these screws uh, I had done earlier had put, uh, I rubbed them in oil and uh, soap. I, I was a bar of soap, got them all, you know, it's a trick I've heard and, and, and used before. Drilled it and pop. The stupid thing broke. Jeez. So now I'm mad. 
So I, I finally got it all uh, apart. Actually, it wasn't too bad at all. It just pulled up and uh, and uh, I got we drilled it bigger and got heavier screws, lined it up and uh, it 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 was money. It was perfect. It just uh, it was no issue at all. And it, it was very, very, very strong. This table is going to be very heavy. Um, so the base really had to be just perfect. Don't you love the carving? I do. Now it was time for the slats, 32 millimeter slats. Uh, got it exactly where it should be on the saw and then went to cutting. I think there was I want to say 56 or 58 of the long slats and I think it was 18 of the shorter slats. Those slats went above the legs uh, all the way around. So I cut all of these and then I took them to the drill press because uh, and put them in my jig so that I could drill the holes precisely where they needed to be so they would be at the center of both of the circles, the bottom circle and the top circle. And uh, I took each one, drilled them uh, once on the top, then moved the jig and got them in place, drilled them once uh, on uh, the bottom portion of them, and then uh, as soon as I was done with each one of the bottom ones, I, we, we stacked them over on the CNC machine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.